Welcome back to the market, please. Now, moving on. Commercial banks in the country will this year be asked to start making preparations towards the increase in the minimum capital requirement to operate. That's if the Bank of Ghana manages to secure government's approval for the implementation of the, this policy. So how will this capital increase affect the cost of credit and economy? George Biafi reports. The decision to settle on 200 or 300 million Ghana cities follows extensive engagement with most players in the financial sector earlier this year. This led to the setting up of a committee which actually presented its finding on raising the capital to the Bank of Ghana in the last quarter of 2016. Sources say the new capital requirement, which will start from this year, will give all commercial banks at least one year to fully meet the requirement. Joy Business understands the regulator is waiting for the final blessing of the new administration before it goes ahead with the announcement. But even before that happens, Joy Business is learning some local banks are making a case for the initiative to be postponed. This is because some banks fear they cannot meet the new minimum capital requirement. For some analysts, the development does not come as a surprise at all because Joy Business understands some banks were not able to meet the previous minimum capital of 100 million CDs. But the Bank of Ghana has maintained that a capital increase is inevitable. This is because it wants to improve the financial position of commercial banks and prevent the situation where most banks always tend to the regulator for waivers to finance transactions beyond a certain percentage of their minimum capital. Meanwhile, President of the Association of Bankers, Al Hassan Andani, tells Joy Business current developments in the economy warrant the increase. Uh, the economy has grown. Um, uh, if you look at uh, the capital base of the banks, we, as an industry, have been expecting uh, the central bank to um, raise capital requirements, minimum capital requirements, and I stress the word minimum because Ghana's economy is um, one of the strongest, probably one of the fifth or sixth largest economies in Africa. And for those of us who sit in institutions like this that are foreign owned, we are quite keen about the Ghana economy. And to the extent that we find opportunities, the minimum capital remains a minimum capital. We'll put in capital as we think can, be, can support our businesses. So generally, yes, we expect the minimum capital uh, to go up. Uh, how much? We uh, yet to be advised, uh, but uh, as I said, it's only minimum, and, and Ghana's economy uh, would remain one of the biggest in Africa. And, and um, banks here, will, if, if you need to take advantage, would ad advise yourself how much you operate on or above the minimum capital. Mm. Yeah. Giving a maximum of, of about 300 million Ghana cities, would that be a problem for the members? Or it's something that, well, it's long overdue, so we will work towards achieving that. Um, look, I think if you look at the um, total industry, probably a good half of companies, of the banks, would already have been sitting above, in terms of net shareholder funds, above the 300 million. You know, and therefore, it's just a question of going through the legal uh, stripes to uh, convert it into capital. Um, there may be probably the lower third you know, who would need time to cover up the capital. Um, but 300 million is not will not be out of the world. Yeah. Some who have also, also talked about the fact that why shouldn't it come from you that always has to be the regulator if your members all agree that we need to grow ourselves and not something that would be forced down on us. That's, that's why I said the word to stress is minimum capital. It's to, to operate in the bank and because, I mean, in the industry and because it's systemic and you are licensed, the central bank in their wisdom you know, decides what is the minimum capital for you to get in there. But banking is serious business. You take risk, you, there are a lot of things you do. And at the moment, if you look at the global accounting system, the amount of capital banks are supposed to put behind the risk they take in order to make money is growing and become significant. So if you're coming into the, in the, into the industry with a view to actually playing you know, the game, you, you need your own equity capital. You need strong equity capital to enable you to play in, in, in certain parts of the, uh, the industry. So it's a minimum capital. Uh, and if you, today, if you're in the minimum, I'm not sure how much. Away from banking, Energy Think Tank Africa Centre for Energy Policy, ASEP, is warning governments against operating their Kosovo Dam at full capacity, say any such attempt could threaten the plan. This comes as some key power plants like the T1 and T2 
as well as the FPS Wukwame Nkuma are set to be shut down for maintenance. The dam has been operating below capacity for some time now as the water level of the Baltas River fell drastically due to inadequate rainfall. Speaking at a press conference, Deputy Executive Director of ASEP, Ben Bwache, said the power situation could be compromised. The government does not focus on addressing the financial challenges faced by this sector. VRS has missed important maintenance schedules, which now threaten supply stability in the short term. The T1 plant, for example, will have to shut down because of non-compliance with maintenance agreements with Asaldo, uh, VRA's technical contractor, to which VRA owes about 2 million uh, euros. Also, um, the T1 plant will have to shut down for about <coughs> two months when Asaldo returns to work. So beyond the fuel supply constraints linked to financial distress of the sector, indigenous supply of gas will also suffer when the FPO Sokwami Nkuma goes out for maintenance. This will affect supply of gas to power plants in the Abuazi enclave. In the face of eminent shortfall in supply, Akosombo could be the next target as the water levels have improved uh, this year. We would want to caution against any attempt to run the plant at full capacity anytime soon, which has the implication of endangering uh, 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 the plant into recurrent uh, uh, inability to provide uh, to its optimal level. Now, 4G internet service provider Busy says it is looking to go beyond provision of internet services to creating added value for its customers. Busy is this month making one year since, uh, marking one year since it launched its 4G internet service and rebranded from Busy Internet to Busy. Managing Director Praveen Sadali has been speaking about the future of the company. Busy commenced operations in Ghana in 2001 as Busy Internet, providing internet access from its famous cyber cafe on the Ring Road in Accra. In January 2016, it rebranded as Busy and launched its 4G internet service. Managing Director Praveen Sadalat shares with Joy Business the experience a year after launching its 4G service. And the whole idea was to bring quality internet services to, to the people. As you, if you look back into the history of Busy, we have been always ahead of the requirement of connectivity, innovation, SME, and all those uh, points where it, 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 it connects with people. And we saw that good quality internet connectivity is the next big thing that, that this market needs. And in our own small way, we have, we have done the necessary changes. We brought in the latest technology. We have introduced a, a, a coverage, a network coverage, which was a 4G coverage, which was well beyond what was thought of. And we have been able to bring on a much larger uh, set of people on the, on the internet platform with high speed, high quality services. So that, that's what, what we came to the market with. And I think we have been fairly successful there. Mr. Sadalaj revealed his outfit would focus on value addition for customers in the coming months. In, in any connectivity, the way it goes is first you, you establish a quality internet connectivity. That is, it is consistent, it is reliable, it is able to deliver the kind of speeds and quality what the customer is expecting. Next follows is the content. That, okay, I have a good quality internet, what do I do? I can't be watching YouTube all the way right or I can't be browsing so you need to add content that what content is relevant to you you are a small business how can I help you bring you valuable content it this could this content could be by way of CRMs by way of uh, uh, accounting softwares these are all small tools which are available online to help businesses right just from for for the sector of SME it could be education it could be IPTV, it could be video on demand. I mean, so there are all these avenues that are available which we are exploring, and uh, very soon we should be bringing them to our customers as a value added service. Plans are already underway to expand the network to Kumase and Takrade.
This is live on the market, please. And financial consultant uh, Daniel Amati has advised that the government's one district, one factory policy must be discussed strategically in order to avoid creation of factories processing same material within a particular municipality. Daniel Amati, however, argues the policy will be one of the best ways of creating employment for the country when it becomes successful. President Ekufuado has re-emphasized plans by his government to pursue a production-based economy through the creation of one factory in every district of the country. The policy initiative is aimed at reducing Ghana's over-dependence on the importation of basic materials for local consumption. Financial consultant with the International Finance Corporation, IFC, Daniel Amate, in an interview with Joy Business, praised the idea but said government must discuss the policy strategically for the necessary results. It is not just a, a policy about industrialization. We need power to be able to, to drive that strategy. We need transportation as to, as to, and we need strategy in terms of marketing and packaging so that we can create a lot of jobs along the value chain. We need to you know, conduct an in-depth analysis of the district in terms of the resources that they command in terms of the human resources available in that particular district, and in terms of uh, their geographical location, as you said, the road network. So that will inform the setting of the industries. Okay, so it shouldn't just be, oh, because you wanted to put up industry, then you, uh, you have to look at it. As you said, uh, I think Adan and uh, when it comes to salt production, it's one of the, the leading in the country. And so, of course, we can have a plant that will pro process salt not just the production of salt, because I even learned uh, the salt could be processed into other products. He further suggests that some municipal assemblies must collaborate with the private sector to help in achieving this policy. It's feasible, but I believe strongly that it doesn't need to be in every dis district. You know, we, we can emerge the district. We can have three districts having an industry, depending upon the availability of resources, because we need some of the uh, districts to serve as a resource base kind of district to feed the, the industries. So to answer you, I think it's a laudable idea, but it ought to be done strategically. Need, they need to involve the private sector into that kind of a strategy, and they need to you know, attract foreign direct investment to participate in that kind of strategy. Because once you don't involve the private sector, once you don't invite the foreign investors into the domain, what it means is that government is going to foot the bill, and that will further escalate our expenditure, and then the fiscal deficit will increase at the end of the day. Many business unions, including the Association of Ghana Industries and the Private Enterprise Foundation, have promised to support this initiative. Now, Zongo, Zongo communities have always been touted to have huge economic potential, not just because of the dense population size, but also the common size of many small-scale business establishments. The new government in this life has created a Ministry of Inner City and Zongo Development to exploit and harness the potential that exists within such communities to the benefit of the economy. Now, Sheila Tamaklo has been looking at some of the economic prospects in these areas. Jamestown is also one of the major inner cities in the capital, located east of the Kole Lagoon. It remains a fishing community inhabited primarily by gas. This was our next stop. Well, talk of inner cities and we are here in a fishing community in the Greater Accra region. For them, fishing is their major source of livelihood. But what are their expectations from the Minister of Inner City Development? Let's hear from the President of the National Council of Fishermen. We think that uh, as a landing beach, we need certain facilities. And already we have in the often uh, project to turn this landing beach into a fishing harbor. It's been in the pipeline for quite a long time now. And uh, we are assured that this time around, active steps will be taken to see to that the ports are constructed. Then the, in addition to that, we need other facilities like, uh, what do you call it, uh, processing areas, schools for the children who roam about, fish processing areas, offices for the fishermen, cubicles for fishermen to keep their fishing gear in, and all that. Uh, there, there's a plan which I think I have cited, and it's my conviction that if that plan is actually implemented, 
becomes a reality to go a long way to improve the living standards and conditions of the people in this community. So we just heard from the president of the Council of Fishermen. But what about the fisher folks who are here on a daily basis? What are the expectations? For them, they say a cold store around this place will be very good for business. Okay, I put you in In this our community, we'll be glad to have a number of cold stores around. Because there are times when we make big catches, but we are unable to store them. The fish goes bad, so having a place for storage will be good. I like it. The outboard motor is a major problem. We will be glad if the prices will be reduced. Formerly, it wasn't like that, but now everything is expensive. We will be glad if the price is reduced. Well, lots of infrastructure for ministries to achieve its inclusive growth agenda for the country. Will it be achievable? Well, as they say, time will tell. Reporting for Joy News, Sheila Tamaklo. We all sell on the marketplace. The art of making hats is gradually becoming popular here in Ghana. Most women are switching from the traditional headgears and scarves to wearing fashionable Western style hats. Today on the Joy Business Brand, that's a repeat of the Joy Business Brand, Dao Kwao took you to meet one of Ghana's finest millionaires, the owner of Hats Code Millinery, Na Ameli Kui. She has a remarkable story to share. For seven years, Na Ameli Kui, mother of three, was working as a data entry officer for an insurance firm, but she was not satisfied. She wanted to do something extra, so she decided to learn a new skill. I was just going through my Facebook uh, pages and I saw this hat thing. I decided to give a person a call and everything started from that end. Naturally, I love making things. Anything I sew, I do most of the things. After weeks of tutorials, Namele started making her own hats while she still worked as a data entry officer. Six months ago, she decided to quit and pursue millinery full time not knowing what the future would be. In every business, you just need to take that step. Despite the fact that maybe you might not have plenty of people in there, but if you make that effort, that you take that step, one day, um, somebody will look up to you and say, yeah, she started this way, and um, it, it will be successful. Now Mele has been successful so far. Her clients have increased over the past six months as more Ghanaian women get to learn about her hats on social media and through referrals. Now Mele gives me a little tutorial about hat making. This is the material we normally use. It's called Siname. Um, depends on what the person really wants. These are the shapes called hat blocks. So we have different shapes here. The ones that the person wants, you just, they have to tell you, I need this particular hat and you have to use your discretion in using the exact things for the person and a hat you need to block it goes through a whole process before it comes out like this and then you start decorating now melee sometimes gets surprised at the level of patronage but it's reflective of the quality of work she does and this this is really fabulous i like the african touch okay <laughs> yeah i i I, as you can see, I love African stuff mm. and I try as much as possible. That's what I'm trying to do now. I do it, but I want to customize it nowadays. 
if you want a particular thing you know um, people really love the kente so I love to add it embellish the hat with the kente um, design for now Mele business has only just started and she's got great ambitions too I really want to see myself making a hat for the queen <laughs> yes um, somebody will go like oh it's too high a, a request but what nothing is difficult if only this man that's at least i can get to this far little by little i'm talking to someone people are purchasing it little by by all means the queen might see it one day and say yeah now i want one of your hearts and that will be the biggest surprise i'll ever have one thing for sure if ever the queen gets to see namely's hats she'd certainly love them my turn to try the hats out So um, on that interesting note, we end this afternoon's edition of the market. Please remember, the Joy Business Fund comes your way every Wednesday on Business Life with a repeat on the market place, place on Thursdays. My name is Emmanuel Abuaji. We have many thanks for watching. Let's meet again tomorrow for another interesting edition. Good afternoon.